Hi guys, so welcome back to the uh, European Central Bank interest rate decision. As always in the English language and obviously also a few German words in between for my German friends and clients from the Swiss. So uh, guys, please uh, allow me a bit of a language break here at some point. Hope you can hear me all right. Sounds uh, clear and uh, sound technically and uh, we can see how it goes. Gerhard, welcome in. Yo, welcome back guys and uh, thanks for the feedback here so far. So we're getting together here today to uh, wait for uh, Mario Draghi, I wanted to say, but it's Christine Lagarde. Mario Draghi has already another job, obviously, here he has taken over another role. But uh, what we are talking about is the uh, PEPP, the uh, pandemic uh, um, and the pandemic uh, um, uh, program, obviously, which, uh, which the European uh, Central Bank started, the asset purchase program. And uh, this uh, would be the uh, idea of uh, a doubt potentially where we might see and uh, say that uh, the bank might really reduce their asset purchases, which would be interesting. Yesterday we had the uh, uh, Canadian Central Bank with no news and today obviously our ideas might be or our idea might be that we get further insights on the Central Bank and their interest rate decision where we could see that they reduce or at least uh, adjust the market uh, the market moves which they do in the, in the asset purchases. The story, of course, and that's what we can look at when we are looking at the US, we see falling yields on long-term bonds, and that's also the same on the European side, uh, also uh, bond yields and uh, respectively, obviously, inflational worries potentially from investors are turning a bit lower, which means uh, the central bank does not need to kind of offer higher yields in order to find uh, clients, in order to find customers for their bonds. That's what we can see in the US and that's the same also what has been happening recently in the Eurozone, which of course makes the Eurozone kind of attractive for foreign or for other investors, not only foreign, of course, also European within Europe uh, uh, traders. But uh, as we know, currently around the globe, it's the same story that uh, with, uh, with a huge amount of money supply in general, at least, uh, we can also see that central banks across the globe are, uh, are starting or have started to uh, really increase their purchases, which means basically the government issues bonds and the, uh, their own bank kind of, it's not their own bank, but the, uh, the, uh, the central banks starting to, uh, to uh, of course, support the governments directly uh, in, uh, in order to finance the debt which needs to be restructured. In the next uh, restructure, in the next couple of minutes, we find out more. Then subsequently later, and that's where we might really go a bit on a bit of a break story here, or take a break in between the webinar. At uh, 45 minutes later, we might find out more when uh, the uh, policy statement will be presented, and of course the press conference where we might see further insights. For some reason, you sound like you have inhaled helium, says Oli. Yes, that's my daily daily dose of helium, which I'm taking to uh, feel good here. No, just uh, jokes aside, guys, is the sound clear and all right? Else, uh, well, I would need to change and adjust my internet connection. I'm here in Northern Germany and uh, we have a nice new fiber line installed. So Arnie says sound is okay, Oli. Please, I'm not sure if you were the one inhaling the helium before starting to listen. Uh, Oli says he can't understand. Uh, Kai sagt, uh, hat einen ganz normalen Ton. So, Oli, sorry, maybe you can just reconnect. We still have a, a few minutes uh, to go for the, before the session starts. Maybe there's something wrong with your connection. Maybe reboot the computer. Now, a good uh, 10 minutes uh, would still be sufficient, I would say. The others, uh, the other participants really keep, uh, keep saying that uh, things are pretty much all right for them. All right, the big hole here on the side is still kind of looming, the euro pound the currency pair I've removed. I'm still kind of thinking on which currency I'm adding up here on the side. Maybe for the time being, I could kind of add up the pound against the Swiss here to fill up this uh, a bit of a gap here. Uh, at the moment, markets are continuing to trade in unclear patterns for me. Let's start with the open positions. The Australian dollar is uh, starting to resume the uptrend, which is good. The market starts kind of pushing a bit higher, weaker US, US dollar in this regard. The euro also starts to kind of move higher, at least against the Canadian, which is great also for us since we are in our long position. And then 
uh, kind of a, a changing market momentum a little bit is the euro to the upside euro dollar as in refers to the euro is kind of working slightly against us i've just commented about uh, on this also this morning in general we can see that uh, the market in general really are moving in a bit of not in clear patterns to me yeah so it's a bit of a wobbly market kind of uh, not really clear to me longer term positions are moving around uh, and i would say and that's quite often happening also it's not only that my trading doesn't work, which it does at times. There are times where you know you take a few positions and they kind of really push back towards the stop loss. That's what it is. That's of course why we take and talk about oftentimes the most important story here in the markets, which is the risk analysis. You really have to make sure that you take your stop loss respectively. It really doesn't make any sense just to leave trades positions on where you might burn even more than what you are investing in. And uh, obviously all this combined really means that after some time you're getting this aha effect in the markets where it has nothing to do with your strategy because your strategy of course uh, should be one which uh, which makes sense and which uh, works over a myriad medium uh, time frames but uh, the big point of course is for sure here that a market might at some points don't give you the returns that markets really stop you out and you keep adjusting your strategy and then again markets don't work the same way you think because uh, one thing is for sure not every position you do and not every position you take can and will work out it's just uh, how trading works but of course at times really you can see that the markets are just erratically jumping around and that's uh, of course the big issue if you see markets uh, jumping around erratically that doesn't really help you and you think something your strategy is wrong but that's even not the uh, the uh, that's not uh, uh, that's not the, the key part okay let me answer all you all others can hear me okay before he punishes me. So as you all confirmed that the sounds are right. Uh, Anis has kept asking right now, uh, how does Euro cap long and Euro dollar, uh, Euro dollar short go together? Considering Euro might react on news one or other way, exactly. It, it doesn't really, to some extent, it doesn't really make much sense in one regard, of course, when you're talking about this own news event only. But on the other hand, of course, my idea is still that the Euro Canadian dollar long trade was from yesterday, and that's an opportunity which I think still makes sense. This uh, definitely is uh, kind of really working out here should the market really resume, right? So support area, market went lower this morning, subsequently pin bar. That's actually something tradable. I missed this here uh, on this uh, earlier market momentum move, right? So pin bar here could have bought right after market would have given you another 10 pips, not too much, but would have been working out. And so far we'll wait and assess how this one goes. Definitely a, a currency pair where we should really keep uh, into consideration. Also, stop loss, I adjusted a slight bit. Uh, 147.26 now is just a slightly raise. Maybe we can actually do it a bit higher, take it a bit higher here. Um, how far are we away from this? Uh, 15 pips might work, might work. We'll see how this goes. And subsequently also, I still see that this market is kind of in a bit of a resistance pattern and might work uh, its way, its way uh, towards the downside, right? So support a friend here, market moves higher, and then kind of went lower, retraced back to the upside, sideways slash slightly falling trend line kick, kicked in, pin bar yesterday, leading me to the conclusion that today the market might turn a bit lower. That's uh, definitely at least uh, what we can see here. And that's why I've taken the trades. Both trades looked at, it, at them together don't make sense. As of course, as you say, the euro might turn to the upside uh, at one in, 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 in either cases, but uh, it's a bit of a, well, it's not a hedging position. It's not a hedged position, but uh, now of course, since both trades are on, I won't take a single trade off. I would just simply wait and see how and which of these positions might work out here medium term so hence i would say let's uh, let's keep focusing on both of these positions and see how how they might uh, perform here so again same story also you could argue that this doji candle is kind of really just or has been a, ret a retracement move here market went lower subsequently could trade to the upside that's at least what the monthly chart is concerned the monthly looks like it will push here uh, towards the upside area once we get a push beyond this uh, 122.45 area that's at least where i would also see quite a bit of market momentum yeah? so we could see that this market here and that's kind of a bit of 70 pips away we could see that this opportunity would work out so we can place a buy stop order but this buy stop order has to be quite far away to be honest 
buy stop order um, above the high here, um, 122.50, I would say. 122.50, um, not likely that it's going to be triggered, but uh, of course, as we can see and observe at the moment, the markets are really not doing anything much, but I'm kind of trying uh, trying to trade them uh, accordingly regarding these recent small small movements here. And uh, these ones at the moment kind of really give me the conclusion that this might work here towards the rising price pattern. So that's uh, that, uh, what we can see here in the euro. And subsequently, I would say we should really kind of also look at that accordingly. I don't see anything major looking at other currency pairs, the euro Japanese yen, for example, uh, it's just moving sideways, uh, slightly bearish. I don't want to start also really wandering around and uh, checking on other opportunities and focus on what we have in our market uh, on at the moment. So I think that makes sense the most. But of course, I'm more than happy uh, to see and answer as much as I can, at least, uh, your questions. If you have any questions, if you have any other currency pairs, of course, since it's a European Central Bank webinar, likely should be European currency related, I mean, Euro related. But uh, of course, uh, let me know if anything you have, let me know how we can do. We can see at the moment the Euro gains some sort of uh, traction, which is good. So to kind of also reduce risk, what we can and should maybe do is really just uh, close this position um, at some point, get this one in a bit of a lesser market environment here right now. We have three contracts to the downside in the euro against the dollar. So if we can manage at least that our account grows a bit, that uh, would be kind of preferred here before the market uh, uh, kind of really uh, pushes us around again towards either side. Um, also, I'm having uh, Kafsa. Hello, hello. Something's weird again, strange. Uh, Kafsa says he can't hear me at all. Guys, that's strange. I have two people now who kept, keep saying that the sound is not working out. Could you give me a feedback, please, if the sound works? If there's any issues, uh, I hope that there's nothing from my side. Um, that's kind of strange. Tom says, um, the sound is working, says Ellie. Alles perfect, sagt Ulrike. Sounds all good? Okay, cool. I'm just wondering if there's some people in between. I'm wondering if it's on my side. Ah, okay. Dominic, kannst alles hören? Hey, Dominic, cool. Auch wieder am Start. Sound is fine. Um, and oops, okay, now I have to kind of go, go back. Okay, last last question here was Kai. Kai is short in the Euro 122.07. Oh, that's a very cool entry. Protect it as much as you can. I think that makes sense. Yeah, also stop loss nachziehen. Ich bin uneins insgesamt, wie gesagt schon, bin uneins hier mit einer möglichen Handelsbewegung. Ich würde eher ein Stück weit einen schwächeren Euro befürworten. Das natürlich hier auf dem Tageschart erst einmal, wenn wir uns den Euro-Dollar anschauen, sehe eher Christine Lagarde ein Stück weit dovisch, aber wir warten einfach mal ab. Ansonsten alternativ können wir auch die Gegenseite einnehmen. Euro-kanadischer Dollar könnte auch nach oben ziehen. Ja, so Eurocat could also kind of really push a lot to the upside. That looks really like well supported. And on the other hand, also we could see that Euro dollar could really trade uh, and turn back, uh, back again to the downside. So that's uh, how we can how we can say and how we can trade it uh, accordingly. So we have either side, and I'll see and try how it goes and how we can potentially really uh, make this one uh, up. Was there any question? Oh, okay, Kafsa was saying buy stop Euro dollar. We lost you. He says uh, um, no. We have a sell stop here in the Euro dollar. That's all I have. So I'll try to be quick. We'll see how if the market goes into one direction and if we see the market really starts moving strongly into one direction, maybe the idea is to kind of close one of the of the positions out and see how we can do uh, in this uh, in this case. If you have any other questions, of course, any other currency pairs, since we have just uh, less than a minute to go, uh, let me know, guys, calling me. Of course, still also, I have some other trades on, on my personal accounts here. So kind of a, a bit of a stressful session here, but we'll see how, of course, uh, since we expect the market news rather to be when we follow up with a press conference. So, warten wir mal. Okay, market zieht ein wenig nach oben. Market trades a bit to the upside here. Euro cat back to entry. That's interesting. Yep, and now the market goes back to the upside. Crazy market, so one wins, one loses. Ah, the euro dollar is not really going into our favor much, but I'm not really sure if that's really like a ch if this really changes the direction uh, fully into the medium term. So we could also kind of say we close this uh, this out uh, here. Now the market retraces. I just wanted to say let's close this one. The entry oh, huge, a bit too late. No.
back to falling price ranges. What's the answer? As expected, of course, nothing major. Let me bring this to my other window and observe the chart. Yeah, maybe not really good for the euro cat, but maybe better for our uh, euro US dollar, which is coming low, uh, lower, which of course uh, would be also my rather bigger picture. Let me see some rather dovish comments here. Let me check what is going on with the Canadian dollar. Oil price starts to go a bit higher. And uh, also, of course, we have to see that uh, yeah, the euro cat, the euro cat, it is in a sideways range. Yeah, and that's that's a bit of the issue with most of our trades here. Most of our uh, sorry, with most markets, most markets at the moment are in freaking, freaking, freaking. I don't want to use the F word. Sideways patterns. Yeah, they've been they've been a great environment to trade the markets short term, but they to me uh, my strategy I can tell pretty much uh, it works nicely. We've returned to 35 percent over the last uh, 12 month rolling, but it's just like when these markets are uh, erratically jumping around. Some other traders, of course, like trading these on the short term on the short note, but for me it's just uh, the longer term approach, which also works nicely here. But we need a bit of patience. It's just uh, not really so sweet currently, and uh, that hence uh, causes uh, causes a bit of uh, erratical movement uh, uh, at times here. So I know it's maybe also frustrating to some of you, but that's why I can't emphasize it emphasize it more emphasize it more than enough here or every day. I would like to talk about it. Really get your risk management in tight range. Really make sure that you don't risk too much, and kind of really make sure that uh, only a couple of percentage points of your Overall account balance is what you risk, just because uh, markets will not always work in your favor, and it's just uh, it's not it's not smart to believe that uh, you will always uh, really make every single trade into a winning one. Um, you guys, I don't see anything here right now, and I would say let's call it a bit of a break, or let's call for a quick break and assess what uh, Christine Lagarde might have to say when she's starting to talk about. Uh, and kind of really talking to us during the press conference. I'll leave you on. I'll put you here on hold for now and get back to you in the next 20, 25, 25, 25 minutes. Kai Legal says, ja, Risikobetrachtung war gerade eben noch meine, meine Wortwahl hier. Immer 1 bis 1,5 Prozent Risiko auf das gesamte Handelskonto. Sehr weise Idee. Das ist sehr auf der defensiven anlagestrategischen Seite, aber natürlich besser so rum. Heißt natürlich, hat man vielleicht bei 1,5 Prozent, hat man da mal 10 Trades, die daneben gehen, sind 15 Prozent futsch von der gesamten Kontogröße. Macht auf jeden Fall Sinn, denn das kann man auf jeden Fall wiederum zurückarbeiten, gerade wenn man die Erfahrung dann sammelt, weil er wird im Laufe der Zeit natürlich dann die eigene Strategie besser, so dass man also weiterhin dann Gewinne erarbeiten kann. Und daher äh, entsprechend dann wiederum das Konto dann äh, nach vorne, nach oben zu handeln. Kai sagte, das musste er auch bitter lernen. Richtig, ich weiß, äh, sehr viele auch äh, im bekannten Freundesumfeld sagen, was, Frankie, du machst nur 20, 30, 35 Prozent Rendite im Jahr. Ich mache hier locker das Doppelte, jedes, jeden Monat verdoppelt, verdreifache ich mein Konto. Alles schön und gut, kann man auch machen. Allerdings mit dieser Art und Weise im Risiko zu handeln, ist es dann sehr oft auch der Fall, dass dann nach ein paar Wochen, nach ein paar Monaten dann vielleicht mal ein, zwei Trades nicht funktionieren und dann das ganze Konto natürlich dann ebenso auch platt ist. Ich weiß, viele von Ihnen werden jetzt wahrscheinlich da sitzen und sagen, ja, ja, lass den mal reden, aber ich mache das Ganze ja nun auch schon seit ein paar Tagen und äh, verwalte auch ebenso Geld von anderer, äh, anderer Leute, Konten. Heißt natürlich in dem Zusammenhang dann auch hier, ähm, dass man mit dem Risiko selber umgehen musste. Meine Kunden würden mich lünchen im wahrsten Sinne, wenn sie mitbekommen würden, natürlich, dass ich deren Konten einfach mal halbiere oder komplett flach setze. Das Ganze natürlich nicht möglich, heißt also hier wichtig, auch die eigene Handelsstrategie zu überdenken. Also, wir sehen uns in 20 Minuten. Ich schaue, was hier weitergeht und dann harren wir der Dinge, um vielleicht eine mögliche weitere Einblicke hier in die Märkte zu erhalten. Bis gleich. Ciao, ciao. Willkommen zurück hier. Schauen wir uns an. Pressekonferenz geht gleich los. Ich habe den Link hier schon gestartet. I started the press conference here. I was sharing the link uh, with you guys also. So please just uh, tune in if you would like to. And uh, let me in between also try to um, to uh, to find out what's going on here. Listen to the press conference at the same time and kind of really assess what this means. I have reduced uh, my position here a little bit. Where is this? Go. 
I, I'm reducing also this position here a, a little bit right now, closing out one contract. It looks like that the market, the strong uh, strong euro kind of comes back. So we leave on our euro cat full steam since the market is uh, pushing again to the upside. That's uh, kind of, of course, helping us to some extent. We can also get a, get a quick idea here on the open position in the Australian dollar, which uh, keeps retracing high also. That's quite cool. And then hence, obviously, wait right now to see if we can get some sort of uh, motivation here. I know both trades, uh, it's a bit of a, well, it's a bit of a, either way, likely one of these positions will not work out if we see a huge move in the market. But um, we could also see, technically, that's why I've closed, uh, I've reduced the risk in one trade here. And uh, we'll see how we can get along with all this. Uh, I, I also would like to emphasize in the past that we've had this quite often that markets went into one direction, kind of then really a change direction again, right? So recently we didn't have a many news event where say, say for example, the market really rockets to the upside and keeps continuing. Instead, quite often the market went to the upside, maybe subsequently turning around. That's another opportunity which we might have that we could say, look, should the market really fall a bit further? First of all, we could close out this position kind of uh, in some profit and potentially wait and leave the other side of the position on also uh, expecting that the market changes direction on the other hand as well. We can see the levels we're trading currently at these current levels and uh, Hensa would say uh, not too much risk we have on here, five contracts in total in the euro, three contracts long, two contracts to the short side and hence I think uh, it makes perfect sense for me. Guys, question, are you involved in any trades also? Would like to know if you have got uh, any positions on, if you have got uh, anything which would be interesting potentially to see and uh, what you would talk, uh, what we, we would uh, say here in the markets. Also, wenn ihr irgendwelche Fragen, Ideen oder auch Trading Ideen habt oder irgendwelche weiteren Argumente hier seht, um, dann meldet euch gerne bei euch. Uh, können wir natürlich schauen, was hier weiterhin laufen könnte. So, da gibt es eine kleine Bewegung, Schauseite. Der Euro sich gerade nach unten bewegt. Da gab es keine So, jetzt sehe ich hier, äh, Christine Lagarde und ihr Team äh, bewegen sich in Richtung äh, Pressekonferenz. Da war ich jetzt etwas zu langsam gerade eben. Hier gab es scheinbar irgendeine Motivation. Die Ehre sind böse. Gut, die Position ist etwas kleiner. Harren wir der Dinge. So, Begindos und Lagarde von den von der EZB am Mikrofon. So, the market is turning lower here. We can see the market is showing, offering some sort of a negative price momentum. This trade would have been, we could kind of potentially really, we can see the euro against the dollar is a bit weaker. We can see the Aussie also kind of really selling off right now. So some sort of strength in the, uh, in the market. That's kind of interesting to see. So we can see the Australian dollar is obviously not working out, which is a bummer for one for once, but uh, we can see that uh, on the other hand, we might get both of these trades and I close out the euro the dollar now, we might see that the Canadian dollar weakness stays in the market. So I closed the euro dollar trade off and uh, would see and potentially kind of really expect the market moving on further. Also, what I would like to do is uh, trading the uh, a dollar against the Canadian, not at all related here to our news event, but potentially we can see supportive trend really lasting and the market potentially trading to the upside. Yeah, you can see this, uh, the market the makes uh, some sort of momentum here higher. So that's at least what we would uh, expect here to happen. The recent trades here, not, uh, not too bad if we are looking at it from this perspective. So we'll see how we can uh, observe any potential market momentum here in either direction. Okay, you know, she talks about inflation. Guys, anything what you have on your mind, on your radar, would be interesting to see. I think uh, maybe not too bad to close out the uh, euro dollar long trade so we can focus in full on uh, the other positioning here and the other positions here. And it seems like there's a bit of a risk of uh, following up. Let me check out this. 
would be of course not too bad if we would see that this market now pushes it to the upside but of course it's a bit of uh, okay stock markets uh, stock markets pushing a bit lower i'm focusing mainly on these two the dollar cat and the uh, the euro cat we'll see how this goes stock market a bit lower I'm kind of a bit short in the Nasdaq also, which helps me talk about it in the last couple of days. Silver a bit lower on a stronger dollar, so dollar strength might be something interesting. We'll see how. We're still early in this session, so we'll see how. Let me listen to her right now and then uh, get back to you if you have any questions. Uh, I'll put myself on mute in the meantime. Ja, also, falls ihr weitere Fragen und Ideen habt, irgendwelche weiteren Trades seht, her damit gerne. Äh, freue mich natürlich auch, wenn ihr zum einen mitarbeitet und Möglichkeiten seht. Ich bleibe dabei, der äh, kanadische Dollar hier könnte weiter schwächeln. Also, Dollarkarte sich nach oben bewegen, da man nochmal eine Position eröffnet. Parallel lasse ich auch hier den Eurocut offen. Kann teuer werden, aber Stop Loss ein bisschen nach unten ziehen. Re reduce your Stop Loss a bit. So, give this a bit of a breathing room here and we're out of this uh, Euro Dollar. Short position here right now. Kaiser gerade ist noch in seinem Euro-Dollar Short drin, habe auf die Hälfte geschlossen. Genau, Risikominimierung, eben guter Punkt. Also, ne, wenn wir uns nicht ganz sicher sind, wie sich der Trade bewegt, einfach mal das Risiko zu reduzieren, hilft definitiv, kann also eine gute Idee bedeuten. Ah, gut Musik im Chart gerade hier, ne? wie wir sehen, der Aussehen dreht gut nach oben. Das war vielleicht nicht so schlecht. Manches Mal hat man ja hier zwei, dreimal daneben gelegen und wir sind aktuell ja auch, auch nicht unbedingt schlecht ja, in den letzten Trades hier. Und da war ja durchaus auch unser Pfund daneben, den wir hatten und vor allem auch der Euro-Pfund daneben. Aber trotzdem sind wir hier quasi auf Null. Das heißt, selbst wenn wir jetzt ein, zwei Trades haben, die wieder wie geschnitten Brot laufen, könnte das natürlich hier auch helfen, weiter unser Konto wieder schön nach vorne zu bestatten. Also nicht hier gleich aufgeben, sondern vielleicht das Risiko im Zaum zu halten. Und da finde ich es genau richtig, was Kai tut, einfach ein bisschen die Risikoposition zu schließen, macht definitiv Sinn. Ja, also, so we see that uh, our recent positions really were working out and not so bad in terms of what we've done. Yeah? So we've done uh, really like two trades, Euro Pound and the Pound ES, which didn't work out, but we kind of ended up this uh, trading week here uh, so far at break even nothing lost so far but it's just maybe one or two trades which might work out and if they do then we could really gain some sort of traction here in our account uh, as well it's a long-term game it's not a quick game definitely that's how i would see it kai also says uh, ich weiß eure Pfund ist nicht ein paar bin da gestern bei 86,40 short gegangen sehr gut ich bin dann nicht mehr dabei der läuft auch ganz gut anschauen Okay, ja, kann natürlich immer noch laufen. Vielleicht hält der Widerstand und wir sind morgen hier unten und Frankie schießt sich eine Kugel in den Kopf. <lacht> genau, da oben waren wir schon. Naja, egal, ich lasse es einfach kalten, bleib du dabei und nimm den Gewinn für mich mit. Das nächste Bier dann auf dich, wenn es passt. <lacht> Er hat sagt ebenso, er ist noch im Euro voll short. Kai, wo darf ich das Bier abholen? Du bist im südlichen Raum, ne? Genau. <lacht> also, zum aktuellen Zeitpunkt, gut gemacht, sage ich mal so. Euro Dollar, we didn't do totally bad, I think, closing out this trade, first of all. We could have done a bit more profit here early on, but uh, anyways, uh, it's a bit of uh, reducing the risk, uh, as I said earlier. Ja, Stuttgart sagt er genau richtig. Schwob. Aha. Okay, so she says, the PEP program will continue to be implemented, will continue to stay in the market, but independently of the asset purchase program. 20 billion euro. Well, nothing major. And indefinite also, as long as necessary. necessary.
Yeah, nothing major. Oli, is the new positive or negative for US dollar, please? Sorry, it's the learning. Well, we can see it's kind of rather a bit negative for the US dollar. The euro, um, Oli, great question though, is uh, moving higher, yeah? Euro higher, dollar weaker. And we can see that, that's quite often a confirmation. We can see that in the eurozone, so the euro dollar is trading to the upside. We can see that also on the Australian dollar, which we are long in, right, which is also moving to the upside. We can see that also in the New Zealand dollar, which is moving to the upside. And we can see that that's very important for us here right now in silver. Yeah. So the silver market and the gold prices, they all kind of start to perform better, which means in this case, the markets here to the upside are likely impacted somehow further, at least to my to my um, to my extent. Yeah. Also, Dollar schwächer. Olli hat da gefragt gerade, ob die Nachrichten hier positiv oder negativ für den Dollar sind. Da alle Währungen insgesamt gegenüber dem US-Dollar hier zulegen, verliert gerade der Dollar, was dann weiterhin also positiv ist. Wir gucken mal weiter. Sieht ja gar nicht so schlecht aus für den Moment. Es geht darum, weiterhin zu schauen, wie sich der Kanadier weiterhin hier verhält. Olli, this sounds better, I guess, since you rebooted or anything else? At least you can hear me, that's great. The euro stays strong right now, which is cool. By the way, guys, another personal note, which I'm having to share here as well. I'm thinking of also increasing my fund management. Usually I'm uh, since now only open to accept funds uh, from institutional big investors, but I'm thinking also on increasing my fund management here at BD Swiss, opening an account which you can follow, basically put any amount in and having me uh, trading it for you. If that's of your interest, uh, I would like to kind of hear like just a bit of feedback from you guys here, just to see if there's any common interest. Uh, if uh, if yes, so just uh, let me know in the chat box here, and uh, we'll find out um, just for the sake of it if that really makes sense for me. Obviously, my cost also has to be considered, but that's nothing which you should uh, should worry about. But of course, uh, the idea to really keep this going uh, on this side. Um, okay, I received one information here from someone. Um, if uh, okay, it would be great also. If you're interested to see like how, how much in terms of funds you would like to deposit, so I can see and play my way, my way around it. Currently, I'm managing about four different funds, and it's a bit of a story also, of course, to have different accounts. You always need to date, trade, trade different trades, but um, I'll see how and uh, if we can, we can make this happen uh, in the near future. She's basically not saying anything new, so um, it's still the same content she kind of keeps pushing through. Kai says, apart from Euro Pound, Euro Dollar Short, he's still also long and Dollar Cat. Well, I also entered one, so yeah. Glad that we closed at least the Euro Dollar Short position. Looks crazy though. The market doesn't really look like, uh, not so. Economic, macroeconomic figures. I don't see anything fancy, fancy to be honest, which kind of really uh, um, impresses me here so far. So I, uh, nothing where I would kind of uh, check on the uh, base news here. Talking about global demand and the economic uh, implications so far. Meanwhile, also, I don't find any news here on the web. So the euro cap moving higher, which is not too bad here for now.
downside risk with COVID. Well, she doesn't say anything new so far, and which is why also I think the markets are not really moving much. Talks about inflation. Ooh, by the way, okay. I forgot one thing, one thing I forgot to mention to you guys here. Um, Oli was asking about the dollar news, obviously. Consumer price index kind of increased more than expected. That should be rather something positive. Initial, initial jobless claims though were higher. I think it's a bit more the initial jobless claims which the markets are focusing on, which is why also the dollar weakness kind of comes through. Yeah, so that's uh, something interesting. Before I nearly forgot about it, the 2:30 p.m. news here. CPI figures from the U.S. stronger than expected, so that could have an impact here uh, in this market as well. Yeah, so that's maybe why the euro cat doesn't move much. So it's just kind of euro related. So we can see the euro uh, kind of trading slightly firmer, but we can see on the other hand that the euro dollar moves further to the upside uh, because of the CPI reading. Yeah. Okay, I received your information. Uh, um, yeah, Valentino, great. Okay, something interesting. Guys, anyone else who's interested potentially in some fund management? Uh, uh, really, I'm just uh, pushing these questions through a couple of times in the next couple of weeks just to get my head around because obviously it needs to be some sort of a minimum where I, it makes me considering I need to set up uh, accounts and all this and uh, also the background work, office work uh, related to that. Okay. I would still see and say we could uh, make it a session here right now somehow soon. There's nothing major. The euro dollar we left looks like the market could kind of resume the uptrend. Could be the case until it maybe drops further to the downside, which basically right now means nothing what I've just said. <laughs> uh, should we really regain momentum above this recent resistance line? We could be in for some higher momentum. That's what I would see here. Then on the other hand, of course, uh, let's forget about the euro dollar trade, a bit uncertain. The euro cat to me still looks somehow bullish and we have our stop loss in place. Yeah. So should the market really regain momentum above these uh, recent highs here, we could see that the euro kind of uh, really stays stronger. So far, I don't see anything major and I would say we can wait it together, we can look at it together, but it's just not changing anyhow. I'll leave my stop loss here. Should the market regain the momentum to the upside, then it would be somewhat positive. Though that's a bit worrying here, I would say. Yes, that's a bit worrying. Mm. I can see right now, yeah, this is not getting stopped out. I think this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. Probably the market moves south. Yeah, now we're getting, that's it. Too bad. It looks like now the market trades lower, to be honest. I'm taking the opposite and doing this accordingly. This looks quite weak. Yeah, I'll do it this way. I'll leave the mark with this here right now. Uh, if I'm if I'm uh, getting uh, hammered out of this again, then well, we have to see. But uh, it looks like the market is now focusing rather after the retracement to the upside on falling prices here. And uh, hence, I'll keep this one on and uh, leave this market accordingly. Euro cat short on weaker euro. Dollar cat long on a stronger dollar because also the euro dollar keeps fading right now. That's what I'm going to do. I leave the market with you guys and. Uh, see how what we can do in the near future again tomorrow morning call as usual in german language and another question from uh, valentino how gold dollar i am long yes that makes perfect sense to me it looks quite good the market could trade again to the upside it looks positive to me also i would say here this market movement to the upside makes perfect sense guys happy trading well shouldn't be right now we've uh, increased a bit our drawdown here slightly negative for now here which is what we have done or what we only have been able to do so we see how I, i'm having some confidence here at the euro cat to the downside just looking at it from this perspective supportive trend broken resistance played the next 12 minutes until unless the market really retraces in the next 10 minutes totally to the upside this trade could be closed out but should the market really stay in these levels i would expect the market movement lower on also especially a stronger oil market which is kind of still okay but mainly on a weaker on a weaker euro here as we can see so i'll keep these ones on and the dollar cat also i'll leave on here on a long position as this is just based on just a stronger us dollar here for now guys happy trading as always talk to you guys later 
Uh, and, uh, Kai, okay, zu meiner Frage vorher, okay, no, genau, äh, sprechen wir drüber, weitere Infos, vielleicht nochmal kurze, kleine Info, in dem Fall hier ähm, von seiner Seite. Ich lasse das Webinar nochmal kurz äh, zum Beantworten der Frage offen, ansonsten viel Erfolg weiter, bis dahin, ciao, ciao.